Now I know there's a lot of you out there that love your PT deliciousness, but what about PT deliciousness for only this much? Welcome back Dram Fam to the Whiskey Diary. Firstly, apologies for uploading a little late. This week, I was off taking photos in the Isle of Skye, such as these. It was absolutely incredible, but I didn't get back till like yesterday, and I had to grab a bottle out of the review queue and get something up because we know how much YouTube likes me to upload at exactly the right date at exactly the right time or none of you see these videos. But anyway, that's by the by. As I said in the intro, this week we are talking about some PT deliciousness. Now, although it does say in the description this is a heavily peated whiskey, it does not scream those TCP iodine notes that we expect from a heavily peated whiskey. This week, we are talking about the Lecheg Sinclair Series Rioja Cask Finish. This is a no age statement whiskey distilled by the Tobermory Distillery on the Isle of Mull that of course makes this an island whiskey. It is bottled at the wonderful strength of 46.3%. It is unchill filtered. It is all natural and very beautifully colored. It is made from barley that has been peated to 39 ppm. It comes in a 70 centiliter bottle. It has been matured in X bourbon casks, but it has been finished in hand selected Rioja casks. That is of course a red wine. And probably the best bit about this is you can pick this up right now on Master of Malt for 33 pounds and a penny. What's really cool about this is you can get it pretty much anywhere for about 30 quid. It's on Amazon all the time for 30 quid. In fact, it's on Amazon right now. I'll drop the affiliate links in the description down below where you can check it out and you can buy it. And of course, as with all the affiliate links, you pay nothing extra, but I just get a little tiny kickback from those retailers, which really, really helps me out. So this is of course Le Chic, um, despite being spelt Le Daig, it is Le Chic according to their website. This is a peated malt from the Tobermory Distillery. For six months of the year, the Tobermory Distillery on the Isle of Mull, they make peated whiskey, and for six months, they make unpeated whiskey. Everything that's peated is under the name Le Chic. Everything that is unpeated is under the name Tobermory. So this is peated. I have had a few Le Chics before. I actually picked up a mystery malt the other week from Murray McDavid, which is absolutely stunning, which was a Le Chic. Um, I've not had a huge amount of Tobermory. Um, I know it's a firm favorite among a lot of people. I think there are quite a few people that are really, really into the whole um, Le Chic 18 year old, I think it is, which is a very reasonably priced 18. It's just not something I've had a huge experience with other than a handful of independent bottles. This was named after John Sinclair, who is the founder of the distillery. And I've noticed it says Sinclair series, of which currently there is only one, which is this one. So hopefully we will see some more of these interesting cask finishes from Le Chic because, well, I'll tell you what I think of this at the end. This sits at their real low end, no age statement price range, which I find really interesting. It's such a fantastic, interesting finish to put into your core range, and it is the lowest priced of the lot. Before we get into tasting this, I've got a ton more reviews coming up, but I'm always looking for interesting things. So if you've got something you'd like me to look at, get subscribed and then drop a comment down below and let me know what you want to see me review. But anyway, onto the tasting notes. Now, I know we don't usually talk about color on the channel, but this is actually exceptional. It is pink, man. That is, that is actually pink whiskey, which is a talking point in and of itself. But onto the nose. It's got a really bright, sparkling nose. Get like really nice red berries going on in there. But a really nice prickly, salty smokiness. Think bonfires and boiled sweets. Sticky and smoky. It's a, it's a 
really interesting prickly kind of smoke. It's not like full-blown TCP peat, but it's got a nice slightly, slightly medicinal saltiness, but then loads of really nice like, ashy wood smoke. Onto the palette. The texture is surprisingly soft. The first thing I get across the tongue is that briny saltiness. That's kind of the first thing that hits me. Immediately after that, loads of the sweetness starts coming forward. Those red currants, like boiled sweets, really kind of stick to your tongue. Following that up, you get like a, a tannic hit, which I think is that kind of, those, that red wine, kind of black forest, dark chocolate, and then the smoke. Bonfires and ash and salty coastal smoke. If you're familiar with your kind of coastal whiskies, you know exactly what that is. The back end of it is tannic and dry and works so, so well with those ashy bonfiery notes. Finish wise, really sweet in the mouth and really smoky on the nose. That retronasal olfaction as you breathe out. There's tons of smoke coming forwards. It's not, again, it's not medicinal. It's not overly kind of peaty, but loads and loads of smoke, bonfires and ash and salt. But the mouth stays kind of sweet and slightly tannic and really, really delicious. Upon revisiting, that kind of story just plays out again and again. Sweet on the tongue, peat on the nose, smoke on the nose. That smoke really becomes so prevalent, like as you breathe in and out. But that sweetness still sticks around on your tongue. I did try adding a bit of water to this when I was tasting it initially. And for me, it just kind of brought out a lot more of the tannins, a lot more of the bitterness, and kind of really subdued the sweetness. At 46.3, it's not something I'd really be inclined to water down. I think, I think as it comes, there is enough flavor there to keep you interested. And I don't think any of those flavors are especially harsh or unwanted. So I think for me, I'd say, obviously try it without, but I don't think water brings anything new or better to the table. That is of course entirely subjective and you might absolutely love it with water. So give it a go. But most importantly, all in all, did I like it? I absolutely love it. At the end of the day, we're talking about a 33 pound whiskey. This is not a high budget premium product. Obviously 33 pounds is a lot of money, to spend on liquid. But I think this is possibly some of the best value for money you're gonna get for a whiskey. It is probably quite a young whiskey. I think it's the nose that gives it away. It's very bright and very kind of sparkling, which I quite like. Now, I generally quite like young peated whiskies. I like the, the usually quite like, almost like banana-y, uh, palette that kind of comes with it, which I'm not getting so much with this, but I am getting a lot of that juiciness from the Rioja cask, and I think that's kind of what's pushing those notes back a bit. But it does work fantastically well in a Rioja cask. I think they've they've just nailed it. That the tannins and the sweetness really play well with that bright young peat, which I think without a cask, which can kind of hold its own, I think you're really gonna end up like losing out to how bright that peat is in a young whiskey. Who's gonna like this? Well, I'd say if you're big into your ard bags and stuff like that, you're not gonna get those kind of big full frontal peat notes. If you're into the Froigs, you're probably not gonna get what you look for in a Froig from this. But if you're someone that's middle of the road pete you like those peaty smoky whiskies but you may find lafroig and stuff a little bit too much this this is for you but i say that it's 33 pounds anyone who's into a little bit of peat could get behind this for that amount of money you're going to be excited by this if you're into interesting whiskey because that's what this is this is interesting and it's dirt cheap so you know what, if you've got 33 pounds burning a hole in your pocket, pick it up. You may have just found your new favorite whiskey for under 50 quid. But anyway, 
that's enough from me. Thank you all very much for watching. If you've liked this video, please do click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel, please do consider subscribing. Let me know if you've tried this and let me know if you're going to pick up a bottle having seen this review. I think for £33, you really cannot go wrong. And on that note, Slunge